It's been almost four months since the Russo-Ukrainian war began, and we still get daily headlines about the war as if it just began. It's safe to say that the tension between Russia and Ukraine is still at an all-time high, seeing how the two countries won't back down from one another. The war initiated by Russia has quickly become an arms race. The nation with the better set of artillery and weapons is winning the war. It is easy to think that because Russia is a military superpower, they would lead the battle. But the fact that it has been four months since the war began and Russia can barely expand their stronghold over Ukraine suggests that Ukraine is more competent than most would think. In May 2022, Ukraine reported that they had received an unspecified number of M109A6 Paladin units from a joint effort between the Netherlands, Italy, and Belgium. Most recently, in June 2022, Norway has provided Ukraine with 22 more M109A6 Paladin units. This raises the question, why is everyone sending Ukraine the Paladin? In today's video, we'll take a closer look at the M109A6 Paladin and why all the countries deem it a valuable asset to Ukraine's military lineup. If you enjoy content like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to this video as I appreciate all of your support. History and Development the M109 was designed to replace its lighter, direct predecessor, the M108 howitzer, as well as the Cardinal M44 howitzer. The M108 howitzer was slowly phased out during the Vietnam War, while the M44 was phased out completely in 1963. While both the M108 and the M44 howitzers were competent on the battlefield, they lacked the firepower to cause powerful and widespread damage as the M108 was considered a light self-propelled howitzer, while the M44 had lots of issues and flaws that halted its service quickly. The M109 was first conceived during the early 1960s by the Ground Systems Division of United Defense, now part of Bay Systems Land and Armaments at the Paladin Production Operations Center at Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. It was approved in 1962 and saw production quickly, entering the battlefield the year after in 1963 in the middle of the Vietnam War. The M109 would then proceed to receive many upgrades throughout the years, the first being the M109A1, which first saw production in 1973, getting much needed upgrades for its cannon and range. What was given to Ukraine recently was the sixth upgrade the M109 received, called the M109A6 also called the Paladin. The Paladin saw initial production in 1994 for the United States Army and the Israeli Army. Currently, the latest entry from the M109 series is the M109A7. Because of its age, the M109 series has participated in numerous wars throughout the years and all over the world. As mentioned, the M109 base unit saw its military debut during the Vietnam War. The M109 would then participate in a lot of major and minor wars and conflicts, such as the Cambodian Civil War, Yom Kippur War, Iran-Iraq War, Persian Gulf War, Syrian Civil War, and most recently, the 2022 Russo-Ukrainian War. While initially developed for the United States forces, the M109 series would see ownership across the globe, with the M109A6 being operated by the United States, NATO countries, Saudi Arabia, as well as Taiwan. Specifications and Features Armor, Propulsion, and Comms The M109 Paladin Howitzer is a big military machine, both in size and firepower. Let's start with its dimensions and weight. The M109 Paladin is 30 feet long, 10 feet and 4 inches wide, and 10 feet and 8 inches high. It weighs a whopping 27.5 tons, or roughly around 25,000 kilograms. It runs on a two-cycle, 440 horsepower Detroit diesel model AV71T engine, coupled to an Allison Transmission XTG 411-4A cross-drive transmission. The suspension system found on this machine is based on high-strength torsion bars with high-capacity shock absorbers. With this, it clocks in at a range of 216 miles with a speed of 35 miles per hour. To protect it from bullets and shells, the M109 Paladin is internally covered with Kevlar spall suppression lining to protect the crew from inside while it is extremely shielded with an all-welded aluminum armor. 
which protects against small arms fire and shell splinters. Each individual crew member is guaranteed to be protected from nuclear, chemical, and biological warfare, which even includes temperature-controlled air. In terms of communication, the Paladin boasts a secure voice and digital communication suite, including the VIC-1 intercom, VRC-89, or the SYNCGARS, which is a single-channel ground and airborne radio subsystem. While we'll be tackling the armament of the Paladin soon, I'll let you know that this howitzer needs a crew of six people to function. Yes, six people, and three of those are ammunition members. However, this can be fulfilled by only one person if the need for offense is not too high though having three ammunition members will ensure that the M109 is always loaded and ready to fire. The M109 Paladin offers a primary and secondary armament that requires assistance in reloading and aiming, thus the need of three ammunition members. The other three remaining members are the driver, the gunner, and a commander. Specifications and Features – Primary and Secondary Armament as mentioned, the M109 Paladin boasts two weapons, a 39 caliber 155mm M284 cannon howitzer and a 2.7mm M2 machine gun. The primary weapon of the Paladin is its cannon. This howitzer displays impressive feats, such as its projectile loading system being done through a semi-automatic loading system, making it easier and faster to reload rounds. The M284 howitzer has an impressive maximum firing rate of 8 rounds in a minute, or 3 rounds every 15 seconds. This can be adjusted to fire a continuous single round every 3 minutes through its semi-automatic loading system. The total ammunition storage for the M109 Paladin is 36 to 39 155mm rounds. The howitzer is controlled and operated via an automatic fire control system with a ballistic computer fitted with an optical backup called the Paladin Digital Fire Control System software. These shots from the howitzer can reach 24 to 30 kilometers in range. Additionally, the howitzer is mounted with a fume extractor and a large muzzle brake to lessen the recoil. The recoil system is hydro-pneumatic and the breech block is of the Welland Step thread type. Gun elevation and depression and turret traverse are hydraulic with manual controls for emergency use. The primary weapon is great for dealing heavy damage, especially against heavy and armored units on the ground. On the contrary, the secondary weapon the Paladin has is smaller and more suited for smaller targets, such as soldiers or smaller units. The M109 Paladin has an all-welded aluminum armor turret at the rear of the hull and has a square hatch on each side that opens to the rear and twin doors in the turret rear. This turret contains the 2.7mm M2 heavy barrel machine gun operated by a single gunner. This weapon is pintle mounted on a cupola, allowing for a full 260 degree rotation essential for sniping down enemies. The combination of a primary and secondary armament allows the Paladin to adapt to different situations, whether targeting heavy units or singular smaller units. The Mini Upgrades of the M109 like mentioned earlier, the M109 has gone through great lengths to get where it is today. The first upgrade the M109 got was the M109A1, which replaced the original M126 cannon with a 39 caliber M185 cannon. This now includes a longer barrel, effectively increasing its maximum range to 18,100 meters. The second upgrade the M109 got was the aptly named M109A2. This includes a new gun mount for stability and accuracy, a newly installed ballistic protection for the panoramic telescope, a counterbalance travel lock, and the ability to mount the M140 boresight alignment device. The storage of rounds was also increased from 28 to 36 rounds. The next upgrade was a minor upgrade called the M109A3. The A3 built only a little from the previous upgrade, mostly receiving upgrades on its communication and firing systems. The next upgrade is the M109A4, which improved greatly on the nuclear, biological, and chemical reliability, availability, and maintainability NBC RAM protection. It also upgraded the traversing mechanic of the vehicle, now hydraulic instead of the previous model's electric clutch, which would fail if any electrical failure is experienced. This was a safer experience to the driver, 
as even if any electrical damage is met, the vehicle can still be operated smoothly. The next upgrade, the M109A5, saw upgrades to the dated howitzer, replacing the M185 cannon with a newer model, the M284 cannon, effectively increasing the weapon's maximum firing range. This upgrade also gave the vehicle more horsepower to last longer on the battlefield and traverse through tougher terrain. The Paladin We now reach the model that Norway as well as other NATO countries handed to Ukraine, the M109A6 Paladin. This upgrade gave the M109 many new features, with the most striking feature being the new howitzer. Overall improvements were done for better survivability, ram, and armament. Upgrades were given to the external armor of the unit, better equipment storage for ammunition, and better engine and suspension upgrades to the vehicle. The biggest difference the M109A6 received is the introduction of an inertial navigation system. This allowed monitoring of the weapon's lay automation, as well as communicating through an encrypted digital communication system, which utilizes computer-controlled frequency hopping to avoid enemy electronic warfare and allow the howitzer to send grid locations and altitude to the Battery Fire Direction Center, FDC. The most recent upgrade the M109 received is the M109A7. However, a newer model is set to be released in two years. The M109 Paladin in the Russo-Ukrainian War With the impressive feats that the Paladin display, it is now a no-brainer why Allied countries gave Ukraine a few of these units. It's a juggernaut on the battlefield. Sporting two different weapons with a powerful howitzer as its primary weapon, the Paladin wreaks havoc on enemy units and areas. Ukraine got its first M109A6 units in late May. Then a few weeks later, Norway sent 22 more units to add to Ukraine's battalion. Now, Ukraine has several Paladin units on their side of the battlefield, strengthening their ground offense and defense. This transfer of units is a much-needed one, as Ukraine already has more power over the airs and the seas. Their main concern was land. Now, they can face off invading Russian heavy units, such as tanks, with the M109 Paladin, as they can deter even the heaviest of tanks thanks to the powerful M284 howitzer. The arms race between Russia and Ukraine is moving at a lightning-fast speed. Both countries display new units on the battlefield every so often, and on Ukraine's side, we will get to see a sizable number of M109 units. We can only assume, with so many nations backing Ukraine, that at this point, Russia will now second-guess their strategies, especially with the acquisition of a new and powerful weapon like the Paladin. Do you think the Paladin will scare off invading Russian troops? What do you think is a better position for the Paladin units, offense or defense? Let me know your thoughts on these questions in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like these. Until next time.